What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Alright guys, so before I start uh, today's video, I want to apologize to everybody. Um, it took me a while to, uh, to record this next video. Um, I've been very busy. Uh, I actually got a new job and uh, I've been, like I said, I've been busy uh, going back and forward, uh, interviews, uh, work interview, um, you know, uh, filling out all the papers needed. And, you know, sometimes uh, even though I was still working at my old job, I was, I was going to the new job and, uh, you know, helping around. Uh, getting training and uh, I've been so busy <laughs> with that and so you know my personal life so I know some of you uh, have been asking for this video already and uh, you know you guys have uh, so many questions and uh, like I mentioned before please if you have questions concerns feel free let me know uh, anything about the dance examination I'm here to help you. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this video. Uh, so for today's video, we're going to talk about the different drugs that we use in emergency situations in the oral and maxillofacial surgery office. So this first drug that I'm going to talk about, and I believe it's probably the most important one, and that everybody working with the surgeon assistant with the surgeon during the surgery um, should know uh, and this is one of the drugs that it's going to come out for sure in your exam so make sure you learn this not only because you're going to take the exam and it's going to be one of your questions but it's something that you have to know you don't want anything going wrong during the surgery procedure, especially if the patient is sleeping and uh, you know you get an emergency where the patient goes into laryngospasm. So laryngospasm, there's two reasons why laryngospasm happens. Number one, when the patient when the patients are sleeping. You know, a lot of saliva goes to their throat, and what happens is that we have the vocal cords, right? The vocal cords are at the top, at the very beginning of the trachea. So you know, the patient is sleeping, they're unconscious. Um, so what happens is the vocal cords close, and then number two, uh, usually laryngospasm happens when the doctor gives more than enough too much of the drugs. I honestly never seen it happen. Usually the surgeons that I have worked for, um, you know, they, they do a pretty good job controlling the amount of drugs that we give to our patients. But I mean, that's that's the second reason why laryngospasm can happen, all right? Now, one of the drugs, going back to the main point, one of the drugs that we use, and you guys have to know, remember this, is, sorry if I don't pronounce it right, <laughs> it is a little difficult, succedinkling, succedinkling, okay, I'll, I'll write it anyways here in the screen somewhere, uh, just to make sure that you guys understand what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about. so succedinkling, it's basically a muscle relaxer okay so this is a emergency drug that you should always store it in your fridge all right so it has to be in a cold temperature and environment um, what we always done uh, uh, we always put a little bottle of succed we always put a little bottle of succeeding clean with a syringe 
ready to go. All right. I've been doing oral surgery for three years and I never seen anybody use this drug. You never want to use this drug. This drug, it's basically use. It's the last resort, pretty much. You know, it's when, you know, there's nothing else to do. The patient is not opening, you know, and basically the patient is like dying, you know? So uh, you get the suction and clean, get it ready for the doctor. Yeah, I mean, you actually, you you know, like we as uh, surgery assistants uh, or assistants, you know, we bring the drug. We have to be very familiar with the drug. You know, sometimes a doctor tells you, you know, because you know, the doctor might be busy with the patient, you know, uh, opening the airway or, you know, um, you know maybe, maybe getting the, the intubation uh, equipment ready to go. So basically going back to the main point, this is a muscle relaxer like I said, and um, basically what this does, it kind of paralyzes the patient. You know, it relaxes all your muscles in your body. And uh, like you guys know, I'm pretty sure the vocal cords are pretty much muscles, right? And uh, the vocal cords relaxes. And that's when the doctor is able to intubate the patient. So instead of being closed, they open, relax, and now they're able to intubate the patient and help them pretty much manually breathe. So that's number one, guys. Make sure that you understand you are very familiar with this drug. Second drug that is used same thing it's a muscle relaxer it's called rocaroni so this drug guys rocaroni and i'm also gonna write it for you guys on the screen uh just to make sure that you understand what i'm talking about um rocaroni it's basically the same thing as succinct all right it's a muscle relaxer but the difference with this drug, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like 100% familiar with this drug. I've seen it once or two times. Uh, the only reason why doctors have this drug, this other option, is because usually succinic clean triggers malignant hypothermia. All right. So basically, malignant hypothermia is when once you give the drug, the body prices in temperature, all right? And then you have another problem. Rocuronium, it's usually uh, not the best, probably not the best, not, not the first option, but it avoids that malignant hypothermia. Just remember, because you have to know malignant hypothermia as well. So malignant hypothermia, and this is one thing that you have to know, is triggered by the drug succeeding gland. And when you guys use inhalation sedation, for example, SIBO, SIBO chlorine. Okay, so that's the drug that we use to put patients to sleep. That's the uh, inhalation sedation, and I know I talked about it in one of the previous videos. Um, so remember, malignant hypothermia, you have to know the cyberlink, that's also one of your questions. And then, to continue with malignant hypothermia, now that I'm talking about, about this, you have to know the drug, the reversible drug for this, okay? So for malignant hypothermia, we have we have the drug called Dantrolene. And I'm also gonna put it on the screen, guys. Dantrolene, so that's the reversible drug for malignant hypothermia. Okay, so so far, we have to talk about Dantrolene, Rocuronium, and succeed and clean. All right, don't forget those three. All right, guys, so we're gonna continue with the video, and now uh, I wanna talk about two more drugs, and this are reversal, okay? So the first one is, the first the first drug is the reversal for benzodiazepines, all right? So I know I talked about benzodiazepines earlier, in my previous videos um, 
So benzodiazepines are Versed Valium type of drugs Okay So these are anxiolytics Alright So um, the drug that we have to have In our crash cart is Flunacinil Flu, I'm sorry Flumacinil Okay Flumacinil Alright So this is a reversal And this is the reversal for the benzos okay don't forget guys the other and probably the last drug that we have to know and this is another reversal but this is for opioids all right so meaning narcotics all right so the reversal drug that we use for narcotics or opioids are the drug used as a reversal is narcan and I believe this drug now comes as a nasal spray. So uh, that's the last drug, guys, that you should know. Narcan. I think it's also called Naloxone. Naloxone, I believe it is. And uh, yeah, guys, so that's it. Uh, hopefully, you guys learn a lot from my videos. I'm also, I might, I might try to post a few videos about my life as an oral surgery assistant and what I do and uh, you know, the training that I go through regular uh, daily job duties and things like that so if you guys have any questions concerns like I always say please feel free to ask I'm here to help you and uh, hopefully my videos are helpful enough uh, to pass the uh, dance examination so please uh, make sure you like this video and subscribe to, to my channel uh, give me a thumbs up uh, comment leave your comment down below please and yeah, I'm just trying my best to uh, help others, you know, succeed in, uh, as an oral surgery assistant. Uh, you know, we really help the surgeons. We really help our patients, you know. Uh, going to sleep by, by itself, it's not an easy thing for patients. And, uh, you know, we make that easier for them, you know. Uh, please make sure that you try your best and yeah, makes your make your your patients uh, appointment you know a lot easier and <laughs> calmer. I'll say calmer, <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> Alright, guys, thank you so much. Subscribe. Thank you.